right, settle in. It's going to be kind of a long video this evening on this Thursday as we get set for the weekend and talk about the wintry potential heading up to Christmas time. And we're going to update the annual winter forecast in this video. We're going to get into some of the geeky uh, reasons why uh, the forecast is what it is and why some of the changes were made to our annual winter outlook. First things first, as expected, it was mostly east of I-79 that we had a lot of issues late last night and this morning. Lots of freezing rain reports east of 79 over towards Oil City, Franklin, Dubois, Clearfield, uh, sleet storm in State College, PA, down to Altoona, snow and sleet, and uh, several inches of snow and sleet accumulated in central and northern parts of Pennsylvania. As of this recording at, uh, let's see, it's 7.18 p.m., kind of in a break in most of the area, but showers will try to rotate through before the evening is through. We're not quite done with the raindrops yet, and rainfall totals since midnight last night, a quarter to a half an inch on average. Some of the higher amounts well south and east of Youngstown, closer to Elwood City, and over into the Slippery Rock area. Generally lower amounts the farther north and west in our area that you are. All right, so we're going to have a little sunshine Friday morning before the clouds went out. Also mixed in with the sun Friday morning, maybe a passing flurry or two. It'll just be kind of an overcast and ho-hum Friday afternoon. This next disturbance pushes through then Friday night into first thing Saturday morning. Pretty good chance for some passing flurries and maybe a little little dustings here and there worth of snow overnight Friday night into Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, kind of like Friday afternoon, just clouds and December, just textbook December weather. A lot of people will be uh, on the roads on Saturday. The, the shops will be busy, the malls, uh, and the weather should not be all that impactful other than needing to bundle up. No better than about freezing on Saturday. Same idea Sunday, a lot of clouds, northwest cyclonic flow around the Great Lakes will keep us in the clouds and maybe there's a passing flurry. So a recap of the uh, weekend forecast, 32 Saturday and 29 on Sunday. Uh, by the way, 39 are high tomorrow on Friday. Maybe the warmest temperature we see until 2023 uh, because of what is coming in the last couple of weeks of the month. All right, let's fast forward to the end of next week. We're going to talk about this and then we'll get to the uh, winter forecast. End of next week, uh, things we know and don't know. What we know is that it's pretty likely that there's going to be a winter storm of some type impacting the eastern U.S. towards the tail end of next week. Travel impacts, pretty likely. Not exactly sure where they'll be highest, but many eastern uh, U.S. airports will, will be impacted by this at a very busy time of the year at the airports. One of the busiest travel days of the year, I suspect, will be next Friday, the uh, 23rd. And uh, many major hubs, maybe including some of our local ones, could, could see some pretty significant impacts. And we're very confident that bitterly cold air will accompany uh, that storm, wherever it may be, it'll kind of uh, that storm will kind of herald the arrival of a much colder air mass for Christmas. And I, I still think that you know Christmas Eve and Christmas Day likely to be our coldest 24th and 25th of December in almost 20 years since 2004. All right, the things we don't know: the track of the storm. Are we going to be in kind of a sweet spot, or is this thing going to kind of uh, you know dumbbell or pivot off to the east and be more of a true problem for these coast cities? These are things that occasionally some models are advertising, and we just don't have a lot of confidence in it a week out. We never do. Uh, anyway, after that, I do think there'll be some lake effect. Whether we get a, a bonafide snow event or not, uh, kind of a, a region-wide general snow event at the end of next week, whether that occurs or not in our area, pretty confident we're going to have some lake effect to contend with uh, during Christmas weekend in parts of northeast Ohio, northwest PA, with this kind of cold air mass arriving. Now, what we don't know is the orientation of those bands. Will this be more of a southwest flow lake effect event impacting Erie and Buffalo, but really not much around here? Or will the wind direction be more favorable for some of these bands to impact our TV viewing area? Again, things we do not know. All right, so let's uh, look at uh, a little bit of modeling here this evening. We're going to show you a couple of ensembles here. This is the GFS Ensemble, the 18Z run. In other words, kind of the, what we call the happy hour GFS. It kind of comes in late in the afternoon, early in the evening. And what we're looking at here is precipitation, but also the pressure pattern by Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening. Now this is, this looks kind of diffuse, right? Not a real well-defined low pressure system. Well, remember, this is an ensemble mean. And so this is the mean sea level pressure, these black lines, these isobars of uh, 31 different runs contained in that ensemble package from the GFS. And so what can we see here? Uh, there, is a, there is a pattern you know, shown here, even though this all kind of looks kind of diffuse. Low pressure here in a strengthening coast, uh, or a, an east coast storm, I should say, uh, taking shape off the coast of the Carolinas and into Virginia. And so this would be you know, kind of a classic 
handoff situation where you get a pretty good thump of snow with low pressure moving through the Ohio Valley. It starts to hand off its energy to the East Coast and it becomes, you know, perhaps something significant for New York City, for Boston, places like that, and especially just away from the coast. So that's the GFS ensemble for Thursday afternoon. Here's a look at the European ensemble for basically the same time frame. Now, the European definitely has a more potent looking system. There are more isobars on this map. You even have a closed off area of low pressure at this point Thursday afternoon off the coast of Virginia Beach. Um, and you still have your low back here. So this is strongly hinting that, yeah, some wave is going to come through, give us a thump of snow, hand off its energy to the East Coast, and probably the bullseye will not be here, but more up in here. As far as the true bullseye, the heaviest amounts of snow. But all of this, again, this is just model data, it's speculation, but we, we talk about ensemble forecasting when we talk about the longer range. We don't show you one deterministic run. Um, a lot of weather apps, um, the forecast for a week from now, based on one run of one model, and then the next model run comes in and you click on that app and the forecast has changed. That's not a good way to consume weather information, especially high impact or high stakes weather information coming at a holiday, potentially big problems on area uh, region-wide roads and at the airports. You don't want to rely on those kinds of data sets. All right, uh, let's uh, talk about odds. Uh, when we look at some of this ensemble data, this is uh, off the GFS ensemble, 18Z run, same run I just showed you, and what the percentages on this map are, are the odds with that run of that ensemble package of one inch or more worth of snow ending uh, Friday morning. So this is the 24 hour period from about daybreak Thursday to daybreak Friday. Now there'll be snow potentially outside of that 24 hour window, but for this 24 hour chunk, which might be kind of the heart of whatever that wave is that comes across, that low is that comes across, uh, these are the odds off the GFS ensemble of one inch or more. Uh, for our area, you can see the current uh, odds, 45%, some higher amounts perhaps to the north and to the east. That's the GFS ensemble. Here's a look at the European ensemble. The odds are higher because, as I mentioned, the, G the uh, European has a more potent wave or area of low pressure coming across, digging down into the Ohio Valley. So it makes sense that its odds of one inch or more are higher. You'll notice at this point, a week out, the odds are not 100% either way. Um, but they are elevated. It makes it so it seems likely, we can say it's likely at this point, that we're going to see snow. It's just a matter how much. A nuisance event, something much more significant, things that uh, we're, we're a handful of days away from really having a good grasp on that. All right, let's head back over here and talk about winter. So yeah, stay tuned uh, for more updates, of course, as we get a little bit closer to that potential storm at the end of next week. All right, the winter forecast. We initially put this out on Thursday, November 17th. As always, uh, we promised a uh, forecast update about a month later, and here we are uh, on the 15th day of December, and we can talk about what has happened so far and what we expect to happen going forward. Uh, first of all, of interest, maybe the January outlook put out by the Climate Prediction Center today. Uh, this is their initial uh, outlook for the month of January, temperatures. And you'll notice odds are favoring, according to them, warmer than average temperatures in the month of January across the eastern and southern U.S. I am not as confident in this idea as they appear to be. I think this could be the right idea, but I wouldn't place money on it at this point. Um, but there are things that you know would, uh, would, would kind of lean in the direction that, of this being correct, and, and some of that would be some of the some of the what we call the forcing in the tropics in the Indian Ocean and over towards Indonesia and the Western Pacific. You, if you watched my winter forecast video about a month ago, I talked about the MJO, the Madden Julian Oscillation. That may be heading into a favorable phase for a while at the end of this month and into January to pump warmth back into the Eastern US. I think at the very least, the cold that we're gonna see in the second half of December is likely to ease back some in January. It may not turn into this warm of a pattern as kind of hinted at here in this outlook, but I could definitely see where the cold eases a significant amount in the month of January. All right, so here's a look at our analogs that we used to construct the winter forecast, and this is just for January. Um, the temperature composite, when you take all the analogs, average them together, you get a map that looks like this. These blues and greens, cooler than average temperatures, the yellows and oranges are warmer than average. And the, the analog composite would suggest that warmer air does try to get into the pattern. You can see that, you know, North Dakota, which is freezing this December, according to the analog package here, uh, 
past history would suggest that they're not going to be in the deep freeze for all of January. So that does suggest that warmer air will try to get into the pattern during the month of January, even though the anomaly, the, the composite anomaly shows below average temperatures here locally, it may not be by a whole lot. Here's a look at February, and this is where the analog package that we used shows the cold trying to press back into the lower 48 states, maybe in sort of a similar fashion to what it's doing in December. Um, not real confident on you know, comparing December to February at this point, but uh, the analog package does show things looking a little different in February as compared to January. So, you know, all these years are listed at the top. You'll notice some of these years are listed many times, um, some more than others. The ones that are listed the most are the years that we think are most similar to this year in terms of uh, the setup in the fall and heading into the winter season. So 85, 86 is towards the top of our list of, of top analogs for this winter. You notice January of 1986 is mentioned uh, four times right there. All right, so our initial winter forecast in terms of temperatures looked like this. Of course, the blues are below average, the yellow above average temperatures. Uh, this was our initial outlook for the uh, meteorological winter season. And, and for us in eastern Ohio and western PA, our initial forecast suggested that we may be close to that below average area, but we could kind of see it going either way, either near average, maybe a little below average. Here's what I've done with the forecast in terms of temperatures. I've nudged the below average farther to the east to basically include all of Ohio and western PA now. The reason for this uh, I did some back of the envelope math for December, and even though we're about a, a degree and a half above average so far, we're going to go into the deep freeze big time. I think December is going to finish two and a half to three degrees below average. January, I would say odds are favoring it being pretty close to average, maybe somewhat above, but pretty close to average. And then I think the odds are better for February to be a little colder than average once again. So it should all come out in the wash these three months together, I, I, I suspect, as at least a degree or two below the average, making it our coldest winter in perhaps eight years. So here's what I've done with the odds of certain outcomes. I've upped the chances of a colder than average outcome for this winter up to 35%, making it our most likely outcome. But just behind that is near average, minus one to plus one. I kind of suspect we're about minus two to minus, maybe minus three for the winter season. Uh, we've reduced the odds of it being a blowtorch kind of winter. Um, given what's coming in the second half of December, I, I doubt that winter as a whole will be able to pull off some sort of a blowtorch um, when we run up the kind of negative anomalies that we're going to see in the second half of December. In terms of snowfall, we didn't change much here. The most likely outcome is still near average. So far, it's been a slow start. We're going to make up for some lost time in the second half of December. kind of suspect January is not that snowy. I think February could be, though. Um, and so it may all come out in the wash as pretty close to average in terms of snow. Um, at the Youngstown Warren Airport, we average about 67 inches worth of snow in a season. More to the north, less to the south, of course. So here's the bottom line for our winter forecast, and this will serve as kind of you know, what we're going to grade ourselves on uh, when we look back at this winter season. We, we think that the late December cold will ease or pull back in January. Might even you know have some pretty good thaws in January. I don't know if it's as warm as the CPC's initial outlook in January, but I could see this, uh, January not having the same flavor at all as the second half of December. I do think because of that, and because our analog package in January shows it to be, you know, on the drier side when it comes to total precipitation, um, January snow may end up being below average. We average about 19 inches of snow at the airport in Vienna in January. We might end up, you know, in the kind of 13 to 16 inch range if I had to, you know, take a stab at it. But February, the analog package is wetter in February. I think the cold will press down into the lower 48 states with more frequency in February. And I, I think even though February is a shorter month by a few days, uh, there's a chance that February could be a fair bit snowier than the month of January. So we're going to see how it goes. Uh, we'll, uh, of course, review this winter outlook once we get into meteorological spring in early March. Long, long video this evening. Thanks for watching, everyone. This is the last weather for Weather Geeks until the day after Christmas because I'm off tomorrow through Christmas Day. But with the interesting weather that's coming up at the end of next week and into Christmas, I'm going to be around. I'll be posting on social media. I'll probably do, be doing some videos from home, so look for me there. Make sure you're following me everywhere, and I will see you back here with a fresh edition of Weather for Weather Geeks on a frigid Monday evening, December the 26th.